Hey everyone, Dan Tagashi here. Today is currently November 20th. It is 2.17 p.m. Japan time. That means it is New York Eastern time in the U.S., uh, 12.18 a.m. I want to give you guys a quick 5 to 10 minute update on world news as usual in a YouTube video. For those of you new to my channel, I'm a former Wall Street guy. Please see the below description area as to who I am. Would appreciate if you subscribe to my channel as I just started YouTube recently. As usual, guys, before I get into all the different types of news, any type of news you think of, it's all reflected in global markets. So first review the global markets, then I'll go into the different types of news. Would appreciate you watching towards the end and at the very end i'll give you my opinion so let's get started first and foremost looking at the markets today in the u.s the dow jones was up today 0.15 percent the s p was up 0.39 percent the nasdaq was up 0.87 percent tsx canada was up 0.12 percent looking into europe we see europe was down today 0.87 percent FTSE uk down 0.8 percent dax germany down 0.88 cac france down 0.67 and ibex spain down 0.64 looking into asia this is for the 20th uh, uh, I believe. I don't know why these dates are mixed up here. The Nikkei is down today 0.41%. The topics is no change of the day. Hansung Hong Kong is up 0.53%. CSI China up 0.1%. ASX Australia down 0.12%. And MSCI Asia down 0.28%. Very little move today. Uh, I wouldn't be too worried about this move in Europe. It's basically because US markets fell yesterday in the afternoon. Europe is just playing catch up. That's all it really means. Uh, meanwhile, the market's not really moving too much. So uh, the volume is very, very low. And I would say that very little is going on in the market at the moment. Let's go on to economic news for today. Economic news today, a lot of stuff came out. Uh, we saw in China, they kept their, uh, well, the central bank kept their benchmark interest rate, which is called the loan prime rate. For more details on China and the interest rate policy, guys, please see my video. I'll put it at the end of the screen on China and what they're doing with their FX and their interest rates right now. It's very interesting and very few people have caught on to this and it's going to affect you and your portfolio going forward so anyways china left its benchmark interest rate steady for the seventh straight month that is november fixing it hasn't really done anything it hasn't really been lowering interest rates like everybody else which is very interesting in the uk we saw consumer confidence fell further to minus 33 in november from minus 30 uh, 31 in the previous month and compared with a minus 34 uh, further lockdowns that contain the second wave of the coronavirus are really weighing heavily on consumers mindset here in Japan, we saw uh, several different economic data points came out. And consumer prices declined 0.4% in October year on year. And this was the fastest decline in, I believe, four years. Mainly food inflation had a big impact. Also, we saw other things like the go-to travel. It's a retarded program that the government's doing right now. I don't know why in the midst of coronavirus. But anyways, that's all for low lowering travel prices as well. And therefore, consumer prices have gone down. Uh, elsewhere, we see in Japan, we see two types of PMI came out, manufacturing and service services manufacturing pmi came out at 48.3 in november from a final of 48.7 in the prime month and it missed the market estimate of 49.4 so still below 50 missing estimates not quite as good as expected in japan the services pmi also came in at 46.7 down from 47.1 month earlier 10th street month of contraction in services activity again not really showing a great uh comeback i'd say in the service sector as well japan is still having a rough time i think coming back and you know uh, basically recovering while most of the other economies that i'm following the pmis whether it's for manufacturing or for services they're already back through above 50 japan's one of the very few economies that has not recovered yet i wrote a long blog about this it's actually a big problem it has not just to do with coronavirus but it has to do with really uh bad government policy i think so please read the blog if you can it's in japanese but you can also do it in google translate as well uh otherwise let's go on to some society news today society news we today we saw coronavirus daily case to today worldwide reported at 647,719 yikes back close to global all-time highs global new daily death today reported at 10,758 uh again close to all-time highs <clears throat> 192,000 cases. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. It's incredible, this US. Like, what is going on here? This is insane. Just completely out of control. Uh, India is at 46,000, so it's stabilizing. I Italy, 36,000. That's a lot for a small country like Italy. Uh, Brazil is kind of stabilized at 35,000. Poland at 24. That's big. 
Poland, I'm a quarter Polish. That's a small country, not a big population. Germany is around the 23, 20, uh, G- Germany, Russia, UK, France, it's been sort of stabilizing between 20 to 23,000 recently. Same with Spain. So really, we have to keep an eye on the US. The US is talking about a new uh, vaccine that's going to be available even at, from mid-December. I'm hearing rumors that uh, the new vaccine is going to go into place on December 8th. So maybe even as December 9th, this Kuhn Warp Speed program that the Trump administration is undergoing right now should have a 100 million doses available to everybody starting from even december 9th may, may, maybe so uh maybe may, maybe that would probably change the situation but nonetheless is that's a lot of new cases every single day 192,000. the virus I, I mean the virus i feel like is expanding faster than our progress in the vaccines uh which we really really need to take note of otherwise lots of important news today i'm gonna have to do this in separate videos guys but this is going to be very important coronavirus is pushing global debt to record high the iif said global debt would break new records in the coming months to 277 trillion by the end of the year trillion guys not billion trillion and guys i've been following global debt for a long time new crises like this uh global financial crisis with a lehman crash the european crisis asian financial debt crisis now coronavirus crash it usually pushes up debt global debt this is all going to have an aftermath someday you can't just keep this Keynesian policy of printing money and printing money and printing money and having no side effects it will have a side effect It's part of financial history. You can look at this for hundreds of years. And I think that this is going to push up gold prices in the long term. But I'll do a separate video on this. Otherwise, I'm also going to do a separate video about basically uh, Munichen, uh, you know, the Treasury Treasury Secretary in the U.S., uh, has basically cut the Fed's lending power. Uh, Even though these emergency lending powers can be revived under this CARES Act, they cut, I think, five of these lending programs uh, into the end of the year. Now, I'm going to do a separate video on this. I don't know what the heck they're doing and why they're doing this. It's kind of a shock to the market. And I think this is the reason why right now U.S. futures are falling a little bit because this is a little bit of a shock. I mean, the Fed can still do a lot on its own, but the Treasury cutting it was kind of unnecessary, I thought. So I'll talk about this in a separate video. Uh, otherwise, guys, yeah, you know, we're seeing in the U.S. election updates here. Uh, Georgia did a manual recount, a physical recount, and people were watching, Democrats and Republicans. Everybody was watching. Everybody was thinking about, oh, my God, there's going to be voter fraud, voter fraud. Nope, they recounted it. And as predicted, Biden won. So for him, for the most part, he won by slim margin, 12,284 votes. This is a very, very, very slim election overall. Uh, But it seems that the manual count is over. And it seems that uh, Biden's, uh, you know, taking this race is it's it's almost seems like it's 100 percent at this point, because he has from what it seems in the electoral college system, he has 306 points. Um, last but not least, talking about coronavirus, Biden insisting he won't impose a new national COVID shutdown, but he won't rule out a mask mandate. This is very important, guys, because a lot of people, especially uh, watching the stock market, watching the economy, were very scared that Biden was going to do a national lockdown. That would be very detrimental to the economy. Now, he's saying that he's going to do it regionally, as in regionally, hotspots will be locked down. I think that's the correct approach. That's a good approach. I don't agree with all his policies, but in terms of doing a regional lockdown for coronavirus, I do agree with overall. That's it for today, guys. That's the main news for today. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please press the uh, like button below and please subscribe to my channel going forward. I'm going to be doing some other videos today, touching on the separate topics. Lots of stuff going on today, especially what is going on between the Treasury and the Fed, cutting the lending power, cutting the five different lending programs. I think that's a disaster. I don't know why the heck they're doing that. So I'll be going to that in a separate video. Please stay tuned for that. Thanks again, guys. Have a great day. Have a great week and see you guys soon.